Welcome to ClearFly training. Today's discussion will go over the partner training on understanding the e-sign process. So many of you currently quote and send proposals to customers, but you really have no idea what the process is once the customer receives that proposal. So today we'll actually cover that. Um, let's go ahead and jump right to the ClearFly portal. Um, if you've been on any of these trainings, you will know that this is a demo portal. Um, and for the purposes of this training session today, we will be looking at the proposal Q4. Uh, the customer's name is eSign Test. Uh, so if we look at that quote itself, we can see the quote was built um, and the proposal was sent to Tom Hall uh, at tomhall at clearfly.net, which is me. Uh, so if you ever need to send a proposal to a customer, so the customer is already giving you a verbal agreement or a verbal um, uh, commitment to the quote that you've presented to them, um, you're simply going to click the send proposal button. You're gonna put in their name and their email address their name is going to be their full name, however they wanna have that name on a legal document. So if they go by a nickname, let's say Slim, you're not, wanna, you're not gonna to wanna to put Slim in here, all right? You're gonna to wanna to put their full name, and uh, as you can see, when I created this proposal, or this uh, quote, and I sent the proposal, it was sent to Tom Hall, at Tom Hall or Tom.hall at clearfly.net. All right. What that person will receive, if we jump to my inbox, you can go ahead and see, move this on over. They're going to receive an email, and the email is actually not going to come from sandbox at sandbox. Again, that's just our demo portal. It will come from portal at portal.clearfly.net. If the customer states that they have not received it, please make sure that they check their junk, spam, or clutter folder. Uh, most likely it will be there. But uh, again, the email is going to state if it is unified billing uh, proposal, which this one is, it is going to say it is coming from your company and it's going to be a service proposal. If it is coming from Clearfly and you do are not branding the quote or you're not adding unified billing items to the quote itself, it is going to say Clearfly service proposal. Okay. So when they receive that email, when they open it up, it's going to show the rate sheet or the quote itself. So as a refresher to their memory, and in this scenario, here is that quote. Um, again, it's gonna show their company name. It's gonna show your business's name and your name as the person who generated that quote. It's gonna have a quote ID to it. Um, and it's going to say how many revisions, so how many modifications have you made to that quote? Um, and it's going to give it the the name or the time when it was created and how long it is valid. All right. It's going to also specify their contract terms. It's going to show their their site. The first page is going to be a summary. The second page is going to be a breakdown. Depending on whether you're set up to show a proposal as a full view or a summary view, if it is a full view, it is going to list out the product name, the quantity, and the individual prices. If it is a summary view, then it is going to show the product name and the quantity, but all the individual prices will be hidden. All right. So again, the customer is going to see that uh, to, uh, to really refresh your memory. Um, and it's going to give a little bit of verbiage here. 
and it's going to state the uh, valid uh, or how long the quote is valid for. And if they'd like to go ahead and get the ball rolling, they can simply click the accept button. So let's go ahead and click the accept button. At this point, it's going to take them to a browser screen that is going to state ClearFly proposal. It is going to have a status bar up at the top of the screen. All right. As we go through this, I'll show you where they're going to get caught. Uh, we have a lot of people, as soon as they sign the master service agreement, they think they're done and they notify you, okay, I've, I've signed it, everything's good to go. But unfortunately, it isn't. So let's go through the process. So they're going to, first thing they're going to do is they're going to designate themselves as a signer. All right. If you sent it to the person who is not authorized to sign it, they can go ahead and specify who that person is and their email address, and they can hit the designate signer button, and it will resend the proposal to the proper person. All right, in this case, I am the authorized signer, so we're gonna keep my name here. If I need to correct it and maybe change it to Thomas, uh, I can go ahead and do that at this time. So we're gonna say I am the designated signer. We're gonna go ahead and click uh, move forward. At this point, I'm going to set up my account within the ClearFly portal. All right. So let's get started. It's going to ask me, do you have existing service with ClearFly? A lot of people don't read this. Probably, I probably get four, maybe five of these a week where people just see I'm a new customer or I'm an existing customer. Well, if they're an existing customer to you, it doesn't mean that they're an existing customer to ClearFly. So if they click, I'm an existing customer, um, myself and your primary point of contact at ClearFly will get notified. I'll look into it. I'll look up the customer's name. I'll look up the customer's email address. I'll look up the customer's uh, business name. And if I do not see that within the ClearFly portal, I will send them an email letting them know that I did receive notification uh, that they indicated they were an existing ClearFly customer and I do not see that to be the case. I am going to resend the proposal to them. Uh, if I am mistaken, please give me your ClearFly account number, which is always gonna start with an SBN. Um, and typically they're like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm an existing ClearFly customer, or I'm an existing customer of ABC Company. Um, and then they go ahead and click, I'm a new customer, and they uh, proceed forward. So we're gonna say it's, uh, this is a brand new customer, so we're gonna click, I'm a new customer. It then gives them a little pop-up window, that says, okay, since you are a new customer, we'll collect the information we need to set your account up, or set up your account. Click OK. It's going to ask them to reconfirm their organization or their business name. All right, so this was an e sign test. It doesn't have to be the same as what is on the proposal. All right, so if there's misspellings or something like that, they can go ahead and correct it right here. And this is what will be in the ClearFly portal e sign test. If they have a different legal name, and they want to have that on record as well, they can go ahead and enter that. So we're just going to do a copy, paste, and we're going to make this LLC. All right. It's then going to ask them for their account tax ID. If, it, if they're a business, so if they're an incorporated business, an LLC, um, a sole proprietor, they'll have an EIN number. And that number gets entered with the first two digits hyphen with the remaining digits after that. If they're an individual who is getting service through you and through ClearFly, they're going to enter their social security number. So three digits hyphen, two digits hyphen, four digits. All right. So for this example, we're going to use one, two hyphen three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, since an EIN number is nine digits. We're gonna click next. 
They're going to enter their billing address. Again, this is not necessarily their service address. It is where they want to have invoices mailed to them if they select to have invoices mailed. Typically, Clearfly emails the invoices, but they do have that option of, of choosing mailing. So we'll go ahead and put in my address click next and they're going to be asked to review that all right the account organization or account or organization name is eSign test the legal name is eSign test llc there's my tax id signing contra uh, contact which is myself and the mailing address i'm going to go ahead and click next at this point they're going to uh, sign the very first of two agreements all right so they're going to click check agreement status typically they're not going to see this document is still in process or being created it's typically going to be there uh, but since this is a demo portal there is a little bit of a lag we're going to go ahead and click this little pop-up it says that this data on this page has been updated refresh it and they're going to click start signing at this point in time if they click review and sign they can read through the contract on the screen and sign it if they would like to download a copy of it before they sign it they're going to simply click the here button or the here link on the last sentence and they can download that document all right, and there's the master service agreement, which is really the contract. They can scroll on through. It's gonna have everything that's, uh, uh, how the, the legal document, or the signing document is going to contain. So company's name, address, uh, the signer's name, and but there won't be a signature or a date, all right? Once they are okay with that, they're going to go back to the document and they're going to click review and sign. Now, if they get distracted or maybe they have something more urgent that comes up um, and they exit out of here, they can always go back to the uh, where they left off by going back to the email that they received. and clicking the accept button again okay it'll take them right back to where they left off so then click review and sign uh, that's just a confirmation of identity stating that uh, this legal document uh, with the signature pending for tom hall uh, if this isn't you please exit all right an e-sign document is just like everything else uh, you cannot forge it. Uh, if somebody signs on behalf of myself, it is considered a forge. All right. So if I'm Tom Hall, which I am, I'm going to click review and sign. They're not going to see this. Uh, this is again just because it's a demo. I'm going to click OK. There's the master service agreement. They can scroll through it down to the last page or they can simply hit get started all right which will jump them right to the very last page they're going to go ahead and click to sign well let's see yep click to sign they can use their mouse to draw their signature but what i see most people end up doing is clicking type in it's going to populate their name they can change their font to something closer to their signature, and they're going to say insert. They don't like it, they can clear it, or they can edit it. Once they're done with that, they're going to come up to the blue button at the top that says continue. And they're going to agree that it is a legally bi binding document. Then they're going to get another pop-up window saying the signing is successful all right 
as I stated at the very beginning, a lot of people, once they get to this step, they think they're done. But if they look at the status bar up on the top, it shows that they're only 50% done. All right. They move on to the next step. This is going to be where they're going to accept the rates that were on the, on the rate sheet or the quote itself. Click Let's Get Started. It's going to show each of the Clearfly products. If you have products uh, from a unified billing standpoint, it's going to show that as well. If those are all correct, they're going to hit accept. And now they're at 60%. The next step is entering billing uh, information. So they're going to say, let's get started. If they would like to use themselves, so if, if whoever the signer is is going to be the primary billing contact, they can just simply click the link that's underneath use myself. Otherwise, they can go ahead and enter whoever their accounts payable person is. All right, it's going to ask for their name, their email address, and their phone number. We're going to say use myself. And that portion is done. So once they've entered that, they're now 70% done. They've got two more steps. The second to last step is authorizing others. This is really, really essential. So there's going to be two parts of this. They can add other employees within their organization to have access to the Clearfly portal. All right, if they entered a different person for the billing contact, that person's name is going to be underneath the signer's name. But if they have an IT person, for example, they can go ahead and add that person as well. Um, or if they don't want to, they simply hit next. And then it's the second part. And this is the essential piece. This, in essence, authorizes your organization to work with Clearfly on their behalf. Rarely do it, customers end up clicking no other than by accident. If they, for whatever reason, click no, Clearfly's orders department and Clearfly's support department will not be able to work with you uh, regarding this account. If I get notified, which I will, uh, that they have not authorized you, then I will typically reach out to the customer and explain why it is important that, that uh, they authorize your organization to work with Clearfly. If you've ever been through a, a orders and provisioning um, process before, there's information that we're going to request from you that the customer is not going to have any idea on. Scheduling when the service is going to be turned up, scheduling the porting, so it, it really behooves them to click yes. So they're going to click yes. At this point, it's going to create the second signing document. We'll give it a second. All right. Um, they're going to click review and sign. Again, same type of uh, confirmation of identity. Review and sign document is going to load. It's just a simple letter of agency. And they're going to click the signature, type in their name, change their font, insert, and click the continue button. And then agree. Once that portion is done, they're going to click next. They're 90% done. Last thing they have to do is simply hit the complete button. All right. So they're going to hit the complete button. It's 100% done. At that point, if we look at your view in the Clearfly po uh, portal, if we go to proposals, you can see that it's 100% done. And somebody within your organization will have received an email asking uh, for you to start the project. All right. The customer on the other side will also get an email 
that uh, will be entitled an introduction to clearfly bill, uh, billing and if they want to pay via ACH, um, either ACH debit or ACH credit, uh, they're going to simply click the online payment button. It's going to take them to their account and they can go ahead and set up their banking details. Okay. So once that is done um, and that email has went out, and if we look at the quote itself, we can see in the history portion that a provision email was sent to agent at agent.local, um, which is the product manager for your organization. So whoever your product manager or product project manager, excuse me, um, is or whoever is set up to auto watch projects is going to receive that email. All right. Um, if you would ever like to go through this process, feel free to reach out to me directly. I will create a bogus quote just like this one. Um, and I'll send it to your name and your email address, and you can go through that process all on your own. All right. Uh, many partners want to do that. They take screenshots so they know what the customer is going through um, and answer any questions that they may have during that process. Or um, if you would like, like I said, you can reach out to me directly. And I will be more than happy to send you a, uh, a uh, proposal and you can go through the, the signing process yourself. Here's a list of the contacts at Clearfly, depending on your organization. Uh, your primary contact is either gonna be Sam Johnson, Bob Jenkins, or Rob Lewis. Uh, as I've stated, my name is Tom Hall. And uh, here's my contact information as well. Uh, my direct uh, phone number, as well as my email address. All right, folks. Well, that is it. That is really the what I wanted to cover. If you have any questions, there is a raise hand button at the bottom of the screen. Just go ahead and click that. I will be notified that you have a question. I'll unmute you, and you can ask that uh, whatever question you may have or provide any comment that you have. Otherwise, there is also a chat function on the bottom as well that you can post a message to me that way. All right. Well, folks, that is all I have for today. If you have any other questions, please let me know. We do have some other training classes coming up. Uh, this is the schedule. Uh, tomorrow, we will be covering understanding the management and support and provisioning dashboard understanding unified billing, understanding payout accounts, dashboard. And then next week we do a deeper dive into the portal itself with how to create quotes, how to add unified billing items, remove unified billing items, um, as well as creating tickets, understanding projects and so forth. All right, folks. Well, thank you so much for participating and uh, if there's anything else I can do for you or any help I can uh, provide, please uh, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Thank you and have a great evening.